Hello and uh, welcome everybody on my new video um, about Chopin's music. Today we have this cute and beautiful and magic masterpiece, which is Bruxelles Opus 57. So in English, a lullaby. What I just played for you is of course the beginning, but most of all is the theme on which Chopin will build, will build a 15 fantastically beautiful, full of imagination variations. Because in fact, this piece, Bruxelles, is a set of 15 variations. What are variations? Well, I'm sh sure most of you who listen to this video know what exactly the form of variations are. Maybe some of you know very well the Goldberg variation of uh, Johann Sebastian Bach, or you do know the 32 variations in C minor by Beethoven, or Eroica variation by Beethoven, or Diab Diabelli variation by Beethoven, or some set of variations written by Chopin when he was younger, or many other, like Abek by Schumann, uh, various variations serious um, written by Mendelssohn and so on and so on so there are there are hundreds of sets of variations Mozart variations and, and so on but in case you don't know I well that's the, this video is not only for those who know uh, I think it's even more for those who don't know because um, I think, uh, I mean, I want everybody to know. So even if you uh, don't know anything about the music, I think you uh, deserve to know what exactly the variations are. So I try to explain in a very simple words. Uh, the, the idea of variations is very simple. We have the team I just played for you. <clears throat> and then after the team ends, the composer starts to change this theme, but there is one rule, very important rule. In every variation, uh, the composer must not change the, the general structure of the theme. The melody has to always be present, hidden. What I mean is that if we uh, want to sing the theme, through any variation, we must be able to do it. It has to be. Uh, of course, sometimes, uh, for example, variation can be s twice as slow. Then we have to sing twice as slow the theme, but it still works. Uh, sometimes can be in minor or major, depends on uh, in which key the theme was. It is very rare that the variations are longer or shorter or something is going on because this is not the real idea of the variation. Here Chopin is also a very good guy. He is exactly following these rules that I told you. I will show you when we will focus. But before we start, I just want to show you a little bit of the very famous variation uh, on the very famous song. A twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, Ach, uh, Wodysza, uh, written by Mozart, just to show you how, what, what the re what it really means to make variations. So the theme is very, very famous. <laughs> Everybody knows this melody. And then what do we have in the first variation? Instead of this, Mozart decides to write something like this. Yes, and if we want to sing, we can really sing. Tam, 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 tam. You see, it works, it works well. I'm not a good singer and it's very hard to sing and play something else. But then variation number two is for the left hand. So I will not play it because Chopin is not doing this in verses. But then variation number three, listen, 
it does not remind us of the team. But everything works. I try to sing. Tam, 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 tam. It works. Everything works, right? Works. The next one, which is very interesting, for example, this. And so on and so on and so on and so when you listen to the bar carol you can if you want and like and can sing you can sing through the team all the time and the team is very short the process sorry i said process when you listen to the process of course the the team is very short it it consists only on four bars um and that's very interesting that uh, chopin decided to make variations um, when he composed Berses. It's not a very common thing, I think. It's a little innovative, I would say, but he had a very good reason for that. How can you make a child sleep? Um, well, it ha the music has to be a bit boring. <laughs> well, it has to calm you down, but it has to be kind of um, uh, hypnotizing. And what Chopin is doing, he is doing a very clever, extremely clever thing. He found an idea that the left hand should will always be exactly the same throughout the piece. So, this is the left hand. And of course, the left hand creates the idea of waving. Right? So we have... Uh, right and left right and left that's one way of thinking another way of thinking is that we have one bar for right like right and left but then we would have to play it much faster and i don't like it so i think it's better to do it left and right and left and right okay uh, before we start, I want to read uh, for you a little bit from Chopin, National Chopin Institute website uh, when uh, fantastic professor uh, Mieczysław Tomaszewski, late professor Mieczysław Tomaszewski, um, our great Polish musicologist and Chopinologist, wrote about this process because I think it's very interesting. So just listen, I quote. Berses Opus 57 is one of Frédéric Chopin's most extraordinary works. It dates from the late years in his output, completed in 1844 and published the following year. Well, this is very interesting. Actually, Chopin started um, this piece in 1843 and it took him more than one year to finish it. It lasts only five minutes, can you imagine? And Chopin was never fully satisfied with these variations. Why? Well, I have a very simple uh, answer for that. Because he had thousands of ideas to make variations on this theme. And he had to choose only 15. How to choose 15 from 1000? Well, well, maybe not 1000, maybe I'm exaggerating, but still quite many. So he was thinking, crossing, thinking, crossing, and finally he mastered the whole piece and decided to publish it. But I'm sure that when Chopin played this for somebody, he could sit on the piano and play variations about on this theme for hours without repeating any. This is absolutely sure. Anyway, let's continue. This short composition is generally regarded as a lyrical masterpiece in which Chopin's compositional artistry is fully manifest. And now very interesting thing. The origins of the process are probably linked to Chopin's enchantment with the 18-month-old daughter of his friend, 
the singer Pauline Viardot. The little Louise was her name, won the hearts of Chopin and Jean at Noan in 1843. You see, that's what I told you. George Sound wrote in the letter, Chopin adores her and spends his time kissing her on the hands. And, well, I think this is enough for us uh, not to make this video boring, because you will fall asleep before the lullaby, which I don't want, because I want you to fall asleep when I'm playing for you. Anyway, what is very interesting, Chopin generally, as you know, especially if you listen to my other videos, didn't have good time that time, because he had trouble with composing new pieces, he was sick, his father died, he was, um, generally speaking, lonely. And probably, this is only my thinking, but probably only this little 18-month-old uh, um, child could make him happier. Because, as you know, little, little kids, they always make us happy especially when they are in good mood, not screaming all the time. But usually kid is in a good mood, wants to play, dance and jump all the time, all the time. So Chopin, even if he felt sick and weak, I'm sure he got the power when he was in the presence of this young little uh, baby. So he wrote the Bruxelles. Actually, he wrote the team and then he was improvising. And this is exactly the the way how to write an improvisation of course i agree with all of you who think that this piece should just be played and enjoyed five minutes of pure beauty delicate romantic soft just what chopin was best in this music doesn't need any analysis and should just be played and listened to. That's also my opinion. But these videos which I create about all Chopin's music, they, their main idea and essence is, is the analysis. So I'm bound to do the analysis of every piece. And this is for those of you who want to also understand deeper, to maybe get into the composer's head, to Chopin's head. Uh, Chopin is dead, so he can't do it for you. Um, I can do it the best I the best I can. I can try to do it the best I can. Of course, I'm not Chopin. I will never be, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, uh, because everybody should be himself. But. Um, if you are interested and curious how this piece is constructed, what the variations are, please follow me in this fantastic journey. So, maybe let's do like this. Now I play this piece for you in its entirety. And while playing, I will be counting variations. Because I do know that for you, especially if you are not a musician, it might be difficult or even impossible to separate variations one from another. Because, why? Because they are connected very strictly with each other. I have one clue for those of you who want to try to count. Maybe not now when I play, because when I will be playing, I will be doing it for you. But when you listen by yourself, uh, maybe at the end of this video, when I play it through without saying a word, um, don't listen to the right hand right hand has a melody and as i told you left hand is always the same always the same if you force yourself to listen to left hand and count then you will manage to count variations because when the team starts the team consists only of four bars so you have to listen four times left hand one when there is a stop. Then the second time. Then third. And fourth. And this is the team. And then every variation is four bar long. So when you keep counting four in the left hand, you can 
catch the beginning of the new variations every time. But let's do it now together. So the team. Variation number one. when we have the team again. Like in Goldberg variations of Bach, when at the end he comes back to the overture, to the team. And good night at the end. Sleep well. even finish the, the video now because what to talk about well I think you deserve something more I think we should try to go through every variation and analyze the essence of it what do you think about it so let's do it the team is one voice only And then 
The second voice is coming and is singing another melody. And this is the voice which doesn't really agree with the melody. So what I mean is that when, when melody goes up, this voice goes down and the opposite. So they are arguing, you know, I found that uh, this will be a joke, of course, but I found a joke that probably a mother and a father are quarreling what time the kids should go to bed. <laughs> and uh, then they can start to sing the lullaby for it, for him. Anyway, I think, of course, it's funny. But it is very interesting because in the first variation, these two voices doesn't correspond, I mean, don't agree. And in the variation number two, they also don't agree, but even more because the, the lower voice will be uh, in the upbeat. What I mean is that the rhythm of the lower voice will not, uh, even the rhythm will not agree because in the first variation, the rhythm is exactly the same. the same just the the direction for example here up and the door down voice goes down so right so Chopin had a lot of fun composing this polyphonic moment I think and then the next variation just I, I show you this rhythm strange thing now variations are based on the polyphonic material and they don't agree. Then we have a very magic variation. Variation which when we look at the score we see the repeated one note all the time, the same note. Very boring and I show you how it looks in the score even if you don't know the, if you don't know the, 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 the notes. This is uh, always the same note. And now what we have here, do you see these very little, little notes, hardly written? <laughs> they are just before this one note. And the magic happens here. The magic happens in these short notes. Because in the middle, in the short notes, we have the original theme hidden. How it sounds? Like this. Fantastic. And then the next variation, Chopin starts to um, write more and more demanding technically for the pianist. What is really a problem, because just to tell you, uh, don't be misguided by the, uh, the, by the naive beginning of this piece. This piece is extremely difficult to play well uh, and technically and uh, musically and uh, you know, when it comes to the sound because generally speaking Chopin de demands here a full palette of colors but everything is in piano pianissimo very soft we have to play very fast but not like in etudes like we have <laughs> very loud and it's much easier believe me I know you think uh, when you listen to the pianist, this is extremely hard to play. It is hard to play, but not as hard as when the pianist has something extremely fast and soft, because then we have to use the light touch of our fingers and we have to be extremely precise, like a surger uh, or, a, I don't know, somebody fixing the, the, the watches. But anyway, extremely precise. And at the same time, we must, uh, well, we must have a technique and we have to change the color all the time. So here we have a kind of like, well, let's say the, the well, the fast, uh, fast passages um, that makes the, like in Andante Spianato and the ground Polonaise Briand, if you know, or if you know my video, I explain it, um, like in the Rococo 
uh, Rococo times. Uh, instead of we have and now going up. Okay, and then this was the first test for the pianist to play fast. Now a second test for the pianist to play double thirds, to play thirds. Thirds means two notes next to each other. Chopin uh, wrote many years before, wrote a very famous or infamous, depends on for whom, etude in G-sharp minor uh, for the thirds. All the etude is right hand all the time plays in thirds. So this etude, you maybe know, Extremely difficult. And all the etude is like this. Very beautiful etude. Here we have a little bit the same technique, but it's a little a little easier. It's not very easy, but if you if the pianist can play this etude, this is not difficult for him. But if you can't Everything in thirds. Now. And now, this is very nice variation. One of my favorite. This variation <sighs> sounds like this. Tieta. Tieta. Everybody can think about what they want, I just want, can tell you my imagination. I have many, but this consists only on two notes. Ta-tam, 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 ta-tam. For me, and this is so magic that for me, I can't stop thinking about somebody uh, having a basket, big basket of uh, flowers and is just uh, throwing flowers on the air when there is uh, wind and the flowers are just so. So one time, second time, third, fourth, and so on. And we feel the scent of these flowers. Then next variation is also for the thirds. The next test for the pianist, the next variation is not for the thirds, but for the chord. We have a melody built on the chord of three notes. So there is one hand, five fingers, but we have to play three notes all the time. And not in a slow tempo, so it's not easy also. Listen. that again fast but if you think it's fast then ha ah, wait for the next one this is four notes on one note in the left hand right the key, i think you heard it one two three four 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 now we will have six notes on one so one two three one two three four five six 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 but of course faster right this is like an etude a typical etude i think so this is like but of course it cannot sound like an etude it is a, a masterpiece but uh, for the hand for fingers playing it soft also that's Yes, and the next variation starts with like a glissando. You know what a glissando is? When I take the finger and just go. But here it must sound like a glissando, but it cannot be played like this because we have some black keys. So when we have black keys, we cannot do the glissando. So we have to play like this. And then we have again something like the flower opening. Listen another flower and then the etude again 
again six notes but I call it uh, you know I don't want to make this music cheap or something I just want you when you will listen to this in the whole to have this kind of connections with what I say but it doesn't have to be of course an etude. it must not be etude at, at all it, it is just the pure beauty the 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 team which is wearing some fantastically beautiful dress some water we feel and so many things okay and then from here we go back like to the the original team but um, well it's not the original team but the the character is suddenly everything stops and we just have a simple melody and a little variation on this melody and the next variation Chopin is playing with us goes up goes down goes up and goes down and then from here from here something uh, amazing starts the key the baby is almost sleeping or is sleeping so one we want it to sleep we want him or her to sleep deeper Chopin decides to change the left hand a little and instead of doing this this short tension Sorry, this little tension. We will not have this tension anymore. We stay on the same line all the time. And this cre <coughs> excuse me. This creates the feeling of hypnosis like we are hypnotized by this listen As I said before, in the end, we go back to the theme. That's all. Um, so now, now I, I would like to play it for you again, um, simply because I love this piece with all my heart. I love performing it, and I, uh, I think, um, if only five minutes, so just let's finish this um, episode with listening to it once more.
thank you for watching and all the best and I hope to see you again in my next videos. Bye bye.